I thought I'd make a fun little video about fitness levels on Zwift, specifically my fitness levels at the moment and the fact that I have experienced 0.0001% of something that elite athletes must experience on a regular basis. So if I have experienced it, does that make me elite or at least 0.0001% elite? Okay, one. Okay, good. Right, we've got volume. We're recording. Fan on. Oh, gear up. Two days ago, I raced in this month's Zwift series, Lap It Up, on the Champs-Élysées. Champs-Élysées, is the French say. And it was brutal, a lot harder than it needed to be. This race spurred me on to make this video about my Zwift fitness and prowess. I started Zwifting 11 months ago now. I'm going to mark 12 months on Zwift in a future upcoming video. And while we're on the subject of future videos, I also announced in last week's video that I have taken the plunge and bought a new... IRL bicycle and I'll be making an unboxing video about aforementioned exciting new purchase when it eventually arrives. I want to build up excitement for this investment into the world of IRL in real life cycling. I'm not going to share any more, not even the brand at this point, but suffice to say I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a fun video. Anyway, back to today's video. It was my birthday two weeks ago. So I took a few days off from training and enjoyed my birthday weekend with the family. Then it was my partner's, Tracy's birthday, which required more celebrations. Then previous to all of these frivolities, I was away in Spain on a jolly. And even though I ran and trained pretty much every single day, I ran up a Spanish mountain. I did make a video about that, so please go and check it out. I have had a three week break from Zwift. So to be clear, I haven't had a three week break from training just from racing on Zwift. That short break from Zwift is what this video is all about. How having a break on Zwift is detrimental to my accomplishments on Zwift and how this revelation both excited and annoyed me in equal measure. It excited me as it showed my progress in real time, something I sometimes don't acknowledge. And it annoyed me for the obvious reasons as no one wants to lose hard earned progress. Yesterday's lap it up race on the Champs-Élysées was an epiphany for me. I have gone from relatively comfortably getting to the end with the lead pack and having something, just a percentage of a sprint left in me to fighting on for dear life and finishing mid pack. There's a guy, there's a guy pushed on ahead. He's only a second ahead, but I'm hoping the pack catches him. I don't want to waste energy. I think he's hoping someone comes with him, but it's far too early. With 20k left to go. No way. Okay, there's a decent climb here. I don't know how long this goes on for. I don't see myself as a mid-pack finisher in Cat D anymore. That's not me showing off, that's just me acknowledging my hard-earned progress that I've worked really hard for over the last 12 months. I'm really looking forward to stepping up into Cat C, but before I do, and I should add that my current FTP is safely inside Cat D, so I mustn't get ahead of myself anytime soon. But before I do step up, I'm still scouting for that first full in-game, over-the-line first win in Cat D. The race was up. I'd won. <laughs> I'd won first place on Zwift Power. Come on. Come on. You have no idea how happy I was with this Zwift Power win. You know, the next step is we're going to have to get you across the line first because it's not quite the same, is it, winning on Zwift Power? I will say that I have a lot of other big events this year, starting with my London to Brighton bike ride in June, closely followed by a 55k ultra marathon a week later. Then I have the fan dance in July, again, closely followed by a 100k ultra a week later. Then I have a shortest break to train for the Thames Craft Challenge in September, which is again 100k. All of these events make it hard to simply train on Zwift alone. I need to train for elevation and running and run elevation and climbing and doing it all with a 45 pound backpack for the fan dance and then running a long distance for endurance for my ultras. So I took a few weeks off Zwift to focus on this aspect of my training. But then 
I made my first impressions video for the Zwift Play controllers last week, which included a fun, it was supposed to be fun, crit race, where I came in second place, but still 10 seconds behind the winner, having been dropped in a breakaway. They went for it with two laps to go and smashed it. Oh, he's gone. He went for a breakaway. I tried to ch uh, chase him down, didn't quite manage to do that, but I'm thrilled to have come in second. I will say, in my defense, I haven't raced on Zwift now for about two or three weeks because I've been training for other running events. If my numbers were anywhere near my numbers two or three weeks ago, I think I would have won that. But you know, that's just bravado talking. Three weeks ago, probably closer to four now, I had wattage numbers on my 20 minute and five minute efforts that I had very recently earned racing on the leg snapper and then the muckle yin. And then I endorsed these numbers by smashing my way up the Alp for a PB. I had managed to achieve 250 watts for my 20 minute effort and 294 watts for my five minute effort. They're not huge numbers for most people on Zwift, but these were numbers that took me months to reach and only just reaching them four weeks ago, I then immediately took a short break from Zwifting. With my running, I found that if I take a two, three, or even four week break from running, I don't lose a huge amount of fitness. I mean, I'm not rocking up at any marathon race and smashing out a PB, but I reckon I could push a park run and be roughly around my normal pace. Recovery takes a massive hit, but I'm not noticing any major losses in fitness. Four weeks is pushing it probably. It'll be a lot closer to two weeks off and I'll be able to do the same. If I took four weeks off, probably not quite the same. Having taken this time off of Zwift, I immediately lost 50 watts off of my 20 minute effort. And that is reflected in my attempt to stay with the lead pack around the Champs-Élysées course this week. Bully boys, mon ami. Okay, we've been split. That climb has split us up. And I'm in the chasing group now. There was a slow and gradual climb up to the monument and I got dropped the first time up here. And then I had to put in a big effort to catch back on using the decline as my heavy advantage. <sighs> okay, nice little group now. Stay in the back, and I've got a feather that I'm gonna save for that climb back up. Knowing I couldn't afford to keep being dropped this easily, I tried to power up the climb for the second time to stay with the lead pack. We're just coming up to the small but long climb. So I've saved the feather for this. Because this is where I got dropped on the first lap. Three percent. Okay. I will say that I was impressed with my drafting and racecraft during this race. Necessity is the mother of invention. I had to take any advantage I had if I didn't want to be dropped. Massively helped with my newly purchased Zwift Play controllers. Shameless plug if you haven't watched my review video of these controllers. I really like them. But go and watch that video anyway because there are some things that I get wrong in it. Right. 3%, here we go. Just stay in the draft. I don't want to get dropped. There's a lady gone, but she's uh, waiting for the pack. So we're all good. Okay, we're downhill now. I then watched as a lone ranger went for a breakaway. I'd already watched one attempt at a breakaway being closed down, but I felt this one had a real good chance of sticking. Okay, there's a guy that's pushed.
He's now seven seconds. Eight seconds. He's going for it. Especially when Tonto followed and made a solo attempt to close down. I waited partly because, well, racecraft and being completely knackered, but I was unsure if the rest of the pack had it in them to chase them down. The pack felt, sometimes you can just feel that everyone else is knackered. Knowing the long incline was coming up and not wanting them to grow their lead there, I decided to use everything I had to chase them down myself. Again, burning all my sprinting matches, catching these two leading riders. I need to recover. Oh my God, I need to recover. I'm impressed with my drafting. I'm not sure how much of a sprint I've got left in me. Did I, have I used this in the wrong spot? I think I've used this in the wrong spot. Oh man. This guy's going again. I then got dropped for a third time, having come around the final corner and powering up the short roller. I didn't have anything left to sprint them down, which is what I would have had to have done if I wanted to cross the line with them. Forget about the win. At this point, I knew I wasn't winning because I had nothing left. To simply cross the line with the lead pack was my aim. That's always my minimum expectation. I would have had to have dropped a huge sprint to have caught them to do this. I did try it. I always sprint for a finish line, but I just didn't have it in me. Oh, he's gone. I haven't got it. I haven't got a kilometer. Now, having said all this, I don't know why I'm surprised by the point of this video, as it makes perfect sense. A professional footballer isn't gonna have a two or three week break and then expect to be able to play a full match at optimum level. They'll get a 50 minute run out at best, and then they'll be subbed. I'm not an elite footballer. I'm not an elite anything, but this was the first time I had experienced anything of a good level for me, which has taken me ages to reach. And then to lose 20% of those hard earned what in a blink of an eye was an eye opener, pun intended. I've previously seen people make videos about taking another FTP test. I might do that. 
because of a short break from Zwift to see how much power they've lost. What they're actually talking about is endurance, not necessarily just raw power. Even with the sprints, which is raw power, you need to get to the end of the race with enough left in the tank to sprint, meaning that you need the endurance and stamina to be able to keep up the pack. And the ease in which you do this is ultimately the holy grail of Zwift. Of course, racecraft, the course, weight, and drafting play to choose part in this process, but you need to have the endurance to be able to put down the required wattage to pull your weighted avatar around to the lead pack to the sprint or breakaway point without being dropped in the race, all with enough still in the tank to give you any kind of advantage for the win. Hey! If racing in Zwift was a business, then what I just said would be the business plan. You could take that to the bank. I'll admit that I used to look at Zwift as a smash and grab, power off the line, power into the first lap from the lead in, power around the course, and then power sprint across the line. That was always how I used to race. Raw power was king. And there's the finish line, power! Not anymore do I do this. Endurance is king. That's where my power is. The most important part of any business plan is knowing and facing into the weaknesses of the business in the plan and mitigating against that without emotion to have in actions to fix it. I don't have a huge sprint and something I'm working on, so I need to focus on my strengths. I have really good endurance. I need to use my relatively strong endurance to mitigate my lukewarm sprint. <sighs> In the absence of suddenly finding an additional three or 400 watts tomorrow, I need to get to the sprint at the end of the race in zone three, ideally. Or probably more realistically, I need to go for a breakaway and use my endurance and overconfidence of my own ability to my advantage. That's my real superpower, my overconfidence in my own ability. Where my competitors are almost always lighter than me and most have a better sprint than me, I can keep up the coasting wattage in the lead pack all day. You just don't know when to give up, do you? I can do this all day. I've now reached a point in cap D where I can't be easily dropped from the lead pack. That's a huge progress as it feels like yesterday I made a video about not getting dropped in cap D. Knowing this, I now need to use this to my advantage. Staying in the draft will suck if I have to and then hope and pray that I have enough in the tank for that breakaway or sprint at the end. And if I have a prevailing wind, if someone else is having an off day and I don't get up, it gets me that in-game cap D win. That's ultimately the, the aim of this. I'm still convinced that a breakaway is still my best chance of a win. So far, I've only attempted a breakaway for a win once and it didn't end so well. It didn't go that bad. It was actually an eye opener, but I might try it again in a future video. My point is that I need to focus on my strengths for now. Keep the weight coming off because that will make a huge difference. Even if I can just get down to under 90 kg, that's my next target. So I get lighter and keep my overall endurance wattage going up while simultaneously learning the tricks and tips on Zwift that will give me that edge racecraft, which I am getting a lot better at. And if anyone can share in the comments the lever I can pull to move me from a five, potentially 600 watt sprinter on a good day to a 900 watt sprinter, then I'll be happy to build that into my new Zwift Racing business plan and give you the credit. Thanks for watching.